Thank you. Coach, uh, a composed comp performance from your team against a very strong opponent today. You must be very proud of the performance. Just your impression from the game, please. <clears throat> First, I must just thank uh, my technical team and the players. I think uh, the, the plan that we had, because we knew there are areas uh, where they are strong, and we knew how we can deal with those areas better. One, they are strong in that ball played behind the defence. Al-Sharif is always going to cause you problems. But immediately you see a PC and an Afsha in, in the same team, then you know they'll be looking to, to come into the hole in the red zone in front of your, your defence and behind your central midfield. And uh, we, we had to try to, to have a narrow defence to be able to take care maybe with a plus one in defence and make sure that we deal better with Afsha because he's the one who was causing more problems. Uh, and I think that worked very well. And on the balls that we're trying, they were trying to play behind the defence, I think Rush, uh, Brian, Lyle and Mutau did very well to break the press when moments were needed uh, that to happen. <clears throat> there were a few scary moments, I must be honest. When we give a little bit of time and space to Diang, uh, first half in particular where Afsha would come short, uh, in fact Sheriff would pull us deeper, and Afsha would come short, then there will be a very big gap between our midfield and our defence. And at that time, Percy is cheating behind Lyle. And one of those balls was the one where Motobi and Prime ended up clearing on the side with Percy. Those moments came probably three, four times first half. And uh, they were scary moments because sometimes our back four would, would be flat and not realising the space that Afsha is taking in front. And, but we dealt with that very well. Uh, the moment we gave the centre-backs a chance to play and not open the midfield, it then looked better for us because the centre-backs did not know what to do. So the game plan worked very well. I think it's a game that we could have scored more goals on the day. But uh, be that as it may, I was still very unhappy with uh, the header that we gave them at the death. I think Brian slipped there a little bit. Uh, Paul watched and not looked in the box what was happening, but uh, it was generally a very good performance from the boys and a very good teamwork, very good uh, uh, togetherness in moments because in a game like this when two big teams are playing, <clears throat> there are moments where that are very difficult in the, in the game and you need to stick together and fight as a unit and be one team at that time and I was very happy with those moments. And I think Motobi had a very brilliant match. Uh, I think he was very instrumental in the midfield to cut a lot of their attacks and make sure that he gives us a little bit more in the midfield. AJ also stood his ground. And generally, the whole, the whole team performed their duties very well. But I still believe Sundowns can play better than this. We can be a little bit more clinical in the balls that we get in the half spaces and in the balls that we get behind the defence. I think Pavol should have scored with that left, uh, sh 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 left uh, foot shot. If he received one more time and m gave himself a chance because he's got a good left foot. Hashim was unlucky with El Shana was safe. Peter also could have done better. So we created a lot of moments. Even first half, Hashim in the goal that Peter scored in the corner kick, there was the same scenario first half where Hashim decided to volley it first time in the far post. I think if, if he had received that ball, it could have presented a lot of moments for us, but it was generally a very good performance and we are happy with the points. Let's go question to the floor, please. Please, sir. So, two questions. Did you, did you uh, purposely sit back in those final five to ten minutes and, because you did invite them then to come at you when you were completely in control of the match. Was that a, was that a conscious thing? You were like, <coughs> okay, we're going to do that now. And secondly, were you a little... Uh, maybe irritated with a bit of a cockiness in those situations where you could have been a bit more clinical as you've just described now. I mean, it was a couple of straight passes, no loop passes, it's, you know, if they put a little bit more concentration, boom, we two, three, four, no up. Yeah, no, first maybe if I can take the second one. I think there were many moments, first half, where I was really irritated by our lack of precision and our maybe focus uh, in moments that were very decisive. One of them, uh, for Pavol to take that shot when he's got Peter Free next to him. It's a tap in and the game is over. When you score the second goal in this game, 
everything goes comes down and we start playing and you could, could even score more than more than five if you do that but when you don't get the second goal the game becomes very nervy and anxious and emotional as well uh, that's why in in most instances if you can check in our in our breaks from defense to attack we were very wasteful uh, and i think we could have done better had we taken those opportunities i think we would have sealed this game earlier <clears throat> Coming to the second one, uh, of them coming in a little bit more, uh, you will remember we we brought uh, Grant into into our last line of defence to play with three defenders, and when you do that, it's a it's it's a ripple effect. When you play with three defenders, then it means you are you are minusing one line in your in your in your structure, so you will have maybe the the five. The, the the four and the one or whatever the case might be but you will not have a scenario where you would have the the last line maybe the middle line and your tens and the striker but we had to take that decision because they were going very direct and we realized that uh, Mutobi was still very important in taking care of Dieng uh, and uh, Mukwena was also very important to take care of uh, El Sulaya and then the option we have then at the back we, they, they have brought two strikers uh, Al Sharif and Hassan. So we realized at that time it's important for us to have a plus one in the heart of the defense so that we, we can contain the crosses because aerially, normally we are, we are dominant against because Al Sharif is not the tallest. It's Hassan that was going to cause us problems. Who nearly scored that header that they got uh, uh, behind Brian, whom I think had nothing else but to focus on him because that was the only thing left at that time. So let please go ahead. Coach, I wish I could say beating the, the champions, man, but I think I think what makes it sweeter for me is beating a collaboration, you know. When uh, you remember during the bubble, we, in, at FNB, you could not use the chief's change room. I mean, our countrymen could not use the change room. But this change room was open for, for Al Ali now, against us. And for me, winning this match was sweeter because I felt uh, Chiefs was being spiteful by, by allowing that because we could have easily taken Al Ali to the change room that has got a ramp on the other side, that, that long distance. It's, a, it's our home match. But it's not our home match when, we, when they've got a change room of the, of the home team. So that for me was very spiteful because we had the same, almost the same scenario last season. But uh, we don't talk about these things because we, we respect and we are patriotic. We, we've been in this space of the Champions League for many years now. We had wanted to train in our facility when they were coming to play Chiefs last year. But we did not allow Wida to train in our facility because that would have meant we are, uh, we are forming an alliance with people from outside. So for me, more than beating uh, Al Ali, I think this is just a good lesson on patriotism, on respecting the fact that when we compete at this stage, we are no longer competing with the Sundowns badge. We are competing with uh, the, the, the badge or the, the, the flag of the country. And it's very important that in as much as we, we are not saying we must create open enemies, but we must have a little bit more, more respect of the fact that we are representing the country, uh, Ali is representing their country, and if the conditions are made to be nicer by our countrymen for, for the opponents, which we did not do last season, for me that, that is where this thing is, is, is a little bit nicer. Because when, when it's a collaboration, you must be proud of it. Let's go front runner online. I think you've had a question. Please go ahead. I think we're just struggling a bit for audio with that question. Sorry, guys. Can we just come back to the floor while we sort that out? Well, at this stage, it's very difficult to know uh, what happened uh, with Mudao, how serious it is because it's a hamstring. We don't know whether it's just uh, he was just feeling it or it's pulled or what. The doctors will be giving us an uh, update probably tomorrow or later today. 
And on Andila, I don't think it's something serious. He's got that thing with uh, with his meniscus, uh, which the doctor the, the doctors could have pulled it to realign it, but unfortunately the game was was thick and fast, and they were never going to stop the match to allow the doctors to do, to do that. So that's why we decided to take him out. But I don't think it's something that will keep him out for long. Skip it, please go ahead. Masketa uh, from Coach, outside of maybe saying going all the way, but I mean, getting a lucky home in a way, in a season like this where even at home you guys have done well, but still said that you're not at the level that you want to be, just how do you read uh, this run also in the Champions League as you want to go a gear higher? And what difference would you say having the fans today you know, made in the biggest team of this match? I think I would like to start with the last one. I think South Africa must really change and look at this thing very closely. We had a, 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 the Nations Cup in Cameroon. And if we, we really think as a country we have rolled out a lot in terms of our vaccination and we have done very well and we think we are a bigger country than most of these countries in terms of our level of development, then we should be a little bit more confident that we, we, <clears throat> we have more people vaccinated in our country then because of that reason we should we should show confidence even to the outside countries by also opening this thing up if you've got these people sitting on this side of the stand what, what what's what, what's the difference if you had the same thing happening on the other side and the other side and the other side because if if there is still a risk there was a risk today but there is no risk when we go to al ali they open for more than 5000 people but we open for 2000 no the, 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 play, the playing fields are not the same. And in the Champions League, we need that support. But I also believe even in the league, we need uh, a little bit more in terms of allowing the support spectators now, because I don't understand. If you go to Egypt, there are spectators. You go to Afcon, there are spectators. South Africa still does not have spectators. It's like maybe we are trying to make sure that uh, people buy more subscriptions for, f to watch their games at home instead of making sure that the game is watched in the stadium. Look the, how, how nice the atmosphere was today. And we would want to, be, to have this atmosphere in all our matches. And other teams also are suffering. Other teams, they don't even have a sponsor. And they rely on gate takings. For how long must they continue without, without uh, any, any money coming from the spectators? So I, I honestly think it's something that the country must look at very closely, because I think at this stage, uh, we are cheating ourselves. Did there was a question from you? The other one was on beating, you know, a lucky woman away, but in the biggest team of, how do you think this adds to how you guys have been doing in the Champions League this season, considering you said here at home, you guys haven't been playing at the level that you should be? To be honest, I would not want to take uh, the wins uh, against Al Ali and get carried away, because the facts of football is that Al Ali has played far too many matches. And they are not as fresh as other teams. Uh, if we are fair, probably now they are close to match number 60 uh, in, in, in this season. And that makes them not to be as sharp as they can. They can still be very dangerous given time, but they played a very tough match on, on Tuesday against Pyramids, and uh, they won that match. They came to this one, you know they've lost their right back, Honey. They've lost some players in the process, and they were not... Uh, at the level which, which they can be if they are fresh and they've got all their ammunition within the team. So in as much as I take, I want to take the credit of us winning the match, but uh, I do not want us to think which this was the strongest team that we could have played in the Champions League this year. If I look at Raja uh, at, in, uh, in, in that other group, I look at uh, Esperanza Sagrada from, from Angola, I, I'm saying Esperanza from Tunisia, with that, Zamalek is out of the group stage. Uh, they cannot go anywhere. Already that say, says to you, there are other teams that, have, that are stronger out there. So we cannot be carried away and start thinking we are bigger. We must be realistic and say, maybe the, the good work that the players have, have, have given against this team and giving us an opportunity to qualify for the, for the quarterfinals very early, it's positive in a sense that maybe we can give a little bit more effort and attention to... To, to the championship and the net bank cup before we, we go on to the quarterfinals. But it is very good in terms of the morale that we, we won two matches against Al Ali. And it is even better 
to know that uh, we beat them back to back because that is, that is historic. But uh, I would not want the team to be carried away. There's still far more to fight for. And what, when I look at the team from Angola, I say we really have to be a little bit more clinical and take our chances better because people are taking it for granted because they, they are not watching. But that's Esperanza Sagrada is a very good team. That uh, Raja is a very good team. So we really have to, to focus more and, and work a little bit harder in making sure that we terminate the attacks and the chances that we get. Elena, please go ahead. Uh, um, just in terms of your approach, when I look at your first two matches uh, in the in the conference, these last two games, um, is, is this maybe this kind of approach that that's going to take you all the way? We used to send out the meeting play, too much interference, getting late in in, 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 the, in the danger zone. But um, in these last two matches, and um, you. Uh, I will be lying if I say this is the one, but this, this was the most intelligent approach. Because last year, if you, if you were to check at the stats of the two matches that we played against uh, early last year, we, on average for both matches, I think we had 64% pole position. And what, does, what did pole position do for us? It exposed us in transition. Uh, they scored two goals out of nothing. Because they are not a team that can break down a combat block. They are not a team that has got the ability of players like Mshishi, like Neo Mayema and all that. So we had to, to, to play the game the way it, it, it is required. If we gave too much space behind our defense, they are a team that forever looks for that ball behind the defense. And Al-Sharif is a, a Malajila type of a striker. He, he may be scoring a lot of goals, but he's a striker that is looking for the ball behind the defense to touch and, and score. Nyasha Mushegui, those type of strikers. But the moment they have to receive the ball in front of your defense, they, they, do, not have to, they do not have the finesse maybe to, to cause problems. Afsha is, is one player that must be managed very well. El Shahat did not play today. He's also another player that must be managed very well. But uh, when you can see that they are looking for the runners, Mohamed, Tahir, uh, Al Sharif, and Percy, you know they are looking for the space behind. Even the coach was, uh, was fighting before the match that we should water the field a little bit so that it could be faster for the ball to, go, to get behind the defense because he wanted to play behind the defense. So for this match, I think the planning was proper. Coach, thank you so much for your time and congratulations on the great win today. Thank you.